Moving ahead, I believe we have a quorum, but I'm going to do a roll call. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. We have a quorum, thank you. And then just a reminder that given the unprecedented uh, circumstances regarding the global coronavirus pandemic, Governor Baker did offer through uh, an order a limited relief from the open meeting law. So we are taking advantage of that today, meeting by remote collabor collaboration through, excuse me, remote collaboration technology. If for some reason we run into a problem, please go to massgaming.com, our website, and we'll give guidance there. <clears throat> okay. Again, uh, just as a uh, reminder and a request, if we could ask uh, folks to mute their devices, that would be really helpful. We have uh, uh, many, many participants who will be listening in today. Already we're at 150. So if you could mute your devices, that would be really helpful to accommodate background noise. Okay. I'm going to call to order today's public meeting. It is <clears throat> number 302 for the Massachusetts Gaming Commission. It is Thursday, May 14th, 2020, two o'clock. And we'll begin, we'll begin our discussion today with an administrative update from our interim executive director, Karen Wells. Good afternoon, Karen. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Uh, I know we want to get to the substantive discussion at issue today, so just I wanted to update you briefly that the MGC telecommuting work continues to be effective, as I have mentioned several times before. Uh, that is going to help inform our discussions about uh, reopening the offices and the timetable on that. As uh, we, you've been aware, we have engaged uh, a group not only a working group for the internal operations at the MGC, but also externally a working group on uh, opening the casinos and best practices and what we want to do for that. So this discussion will help that working group and we'll be bringing in others uh, along in those discussions, but both the internal and external pieces of that are fully engaged, the teams are meeting and we're moving along with that. So just wanted to let the commission know that continues to work effectively and if you have any comments, questions, or concern, you can direct those to me and I'll inform you as we go with those. But otherwise, I will turn it over to you because I know this is a, a subject of great interest today and, and want to get going on the discussion. Well, well thank you, uh, Karen, and, and thank, thank you to the entire team. Uh, <clears throat> at the end of the meeting, my fellow commissioners will allow the opportunity for you to add in, but we, of course, appreciate all the good work that the entire team is doing and respect their resiliency. Uh, it's been a, really a seamless effort. <clears throat> but to all of those who are joining us today, thank you. Our thoughts remain, of course, with those who are in life battles with the coronavirus and with their families. And our deep appreciation is extended to the, those on the front line, particularly our medical personnel who are risking so much for all of us. I wanna give special thanks, of course, to Encore Boston Harbor, MGM Springfield, and Plain Ridge Park Casino for being here today to start a discussion regarding casino reopening protocols and procedures. I really want to thank each of you, each licensee for your leadership throughout this global crisis. Each of you have had to make difficult assessments regarding your individual business needs, but it's clear that all of you have shared common moral and civic conviction in the health and well being of your communities, your employees, and your guests have been at the core of all of your decisions. For that, we thank you. Our shared commitment to health and well being also includes responsible gaming, the GameSense program, and problem gambling mitigation. During this time of isolation, we know that those who are challenged by problem gambling are our most vulnerable. <clears throat> we ask our licensees for their continued collaboration in addressing those priorities as we move forward. And as today's discussion 
This discussion is intended to mark the beginning of an iterative process to support a future safe and sustainable reopening of all three gaming establishments. We thank you, each of your licensees, for submitting their preliminary health and sanitation plans. And for those who haven't seen them, they are available on our, um, our website. We know that this is very much an evolving process informed by federal, state, and local directives. We are all closely monitoring the guidance of Governor Baker's reopening advisory board and fully appreciate the governor's emphasis that data rather than dates will drive the anticipated phased in approach to the Commonwealth's economy. The goal for us today is to ensure that the commissioners, all five of us, are updated throughout this process and that you, licensees, hear their questions to assist you in your planning. Each of your draft makes clear that you are actively monitoring CDC guidelines, government mandates, and public health science. And each of you must tailor your plan to the individual needs of your facility, your physical layout, and your amenities. We intend to make no definitive decisions today and will have no votes as it relates to these preliminary plans. The commission, however, wants to be nimble to support a smooth, operationally sustainable restart when the time is right. Today is just the first step in that effort to help our entire team at the MGC anticipate and prepare appropriately. As for housekeeping, and I know my son is shifting here. Um, as for housekeeping, today's discussion is intended to be as conversational as, uh, as uh, possible among the MGC and its licensees. If we were all in the same physical space right now, we'd be sitting around a big table. It would be a table that the public is invited to join. We, as your regulator, are required to work in the public and transparency is at the heart of our mission. This is a critical subject matter in which you licensees all share common interest and purpose. We thank you for your ongoing cooperation and commitment to a continuing public discourse. Rather than have a formal presentation of each of your plans, uh, we decided that it makes sense to identify categories that will frame today's discussion. We've identified four, physical and social distancing, hygiene, cleaning, and sanitation protocols, staffing and operations, screening and occupancy. There are many proposals and questions concerning reopening that we know don't fall within those categories. But those, those proposals, those questions will be for another time. For instance, we recognize that the licensees are, uh, may well need or ask for regulatory relief in order to accommodate the new normal. If that becomes the case, we'll address that in another meeting. Indeed, today's meeting might help surface those needs. But for today, we'll operate within the framework of those four categories. I'll leave with the first question and then ask my fellow commissioners to follow with theirs. And I think we'll spend about 20 minutes on each topic, giving us some time to do some wrap up questions. Given that we're operating virtually, I'm gonna um, work to ensure that we hear everyone. And I'm just gonna to try to put on a different view here. And I hope that you'll inter um, interject naturally. There's nothing natural about this, but to the extent it is natural, feel free to interject accordingly. And if necessary, wave your hand to um, ensure that we miss no one. And I ask my fellow commissioners and Shara, Karen, to help me if in fact I'm missing someone I um, ask for your forgiveness. Before we begin, I thought I'd ask each licensee um, to introduce their team and make any introductory remark that they are inclined to make, and then we'll proceed with our first question. So I'll start with Brian, then move to Chris, and then Lance, and if any of those individuals aren't on, their team members are, and they can proceed. So uh, Brian Goldbrins, please. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners, and good afternoon to everyone on the call. I'd uh, like to first say that I, I, I want to appreci appreciate you uh, taking the time to review our plan in advance. I know we've been able to get copies to everyone. I believe everyone has a copy. For anyone else on the call that doesn't have a copy of our plan, it is posted on our website. 
I wanted to start by saying in no way do we believe that they, these protocols or procedures that we put together are right for everyone. Um, as you said, Chair, uh, these have all been developed for our property, our size, our location. And so we, we, we looked at each other and said, where do you start and how do you approach a pandemic <laughs> and guidelines that we've never really uh, approached before? So Wynn Resorts, our parent company, since none of us are medical experts or infectious disease specialists, uh, went out and, and developed and brought a group of professionals together, medical experts from Johns Hopkins University's Georgetown, and uh, pulled these professionals together to help us really create this plan to vet, amend, and approve a plan for us so we knew exactly what we were getting into. And as we've proposed different things with this group, it's been a great conversation of back and forth. Yes, you can do this. No, this chemical does, isn't on the end list with the EPA. You need to find another chemical. And we've gone through many iterations of this plan that you have today. In fact, this is a living, breathing plan. And we do plan on reproducing or amending this plan and reposting it in the coming weeks. Um, with your guidance, with the guidance of all that we've continued to learn from Macau and from our, our properties there, as well as Las Vegas, we're putting to together what we believe a well thought out, effective and comprehensive plan. I'd like to take just a moment, if it's possible, to just highlight a few of the key points of our plan, if that's okay. I have a couple nodding heads. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, just to highlight a few pieces of our plan, the temperature checks, when you walk into our building, whether you're a customer or an employee, there will be thermal cameras at every single entrance. We have reduced the number of entrances down to six public entrances and one entrance for employees. Those entrances will have thermal imaging cameras which will register uh, everyone's temperature, every person coming into the building. If they are 100.4 or higher, they will be taken to a private area where we will do a second temporal lobe uh, temperature check as well as accompanying uh, a few health questions and a screening. If they refuse to do that, that's fine. They won't be able to enter our property. They'll have to leave. We want to ensure everyone's safety. And, and on that point, by no means do we believe we should be in one of the earliest phases. We certainly defer to the governor and to the MGC as to when you fi find it appropriate for us to re-enter and re-engage. But what we want to do with this time is make sure that we continue to perfect a plan with everyone's collective knowledge so we have the best possible plan for our industry. In addition to the temperature checks, we'll also be making sure that every single employee will be wearing a mask and will be provided the proper PPE. Every single customer that comes in will be handed a mask as well if they don't already have one on. Safe physical distancing will be enforced throughout our entire facility, both front of house and back of house. That will be achieved by demarcations on the floor rope and stanchions, organizing queues if there needs to be a queue, and ensuring six feet. How will we do that? We'll ensure that with extra security measures and extra security personnel. We've Brian, also if I could interrupt you because I do think you're going to be getting into a lot of the, the points which are put forth in, in the plan so beautifully. So, and I think what we'll do in the interest of time of the four categories, what we'll do is circle back. And at the end, if there's something that we haven't touched on, we preserve that time that you really want to highlight, I'll circle back and make sure that you have that opportunity. Does that make sense? I hate to interject, but I think in order to, uh, to stay within that framework that I think the commissioners have prepared for. Okay, so thank you. Happy, happy to come back anytime and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. We appreciate it. Okay, and, and your team, do you want to just introduce please? Certainly, I have Jackie Crum on with me. She is our senior legal counsel. And she and I are available at any point, whatever you, whatever you need. Right, and, and we'll be uh, circling uh, through each, each licensee will have an opportunity to respond to each individual question. And again, right. interject accordingly. All right, thank you. Thank you. And then I think I, I've asked for Chris Kelly, if he's, if he's here, if not, he's a member of the MGM team. Sure, uh, Chair Owen, this is Seth Stratton. I'll jump in for Chris, he is on the phone. Um, is having some technical difficulties, so I'll, I'll handle the introduction. Um, uh, okay, and if you, if um, somebody texts me his number, I'll see if I can help out, okay? Sure. Uh, not, not you, um, somebody has, uh, either Karen or Shara have their number. Yeah. Fine, thank you. 
So um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. As, as all of you know, my name is Seth Stratton, Vice President of Legal Counsel for MGM Springfield. Um, I'll give a very brief overview of our plan and then introduce the folks we have. Um, following work with medical and science experts, MGM Resorts has developed a multi-layered seven-point plan designed to deter the spread of COVID-19, protect our customers and employees, and help us rapidly respond if a guest or employee shows symptoms or test positive for the virus. Using this approach, MGM Resorts is creating an environment that puts health and safety at the forefront of all that we do. The seven points of the plan are as follows. Screening and temperature checks and employee training is number one. Number two is use of masks and PPE. Number three is physical distancing. Number four is hand washing and enhanced sanitation. Sanit sanitiz sanitiz <laughs> sanitation, we we'll call it, sorry. Um, number five is HV. I have that exact trouble, ask anybody. So I, I can't get it out of my mouth, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sanitization, I got it. Yes. <laughs> number five is HVAC controls and air quality. Uh, number six is incident response protocols. And number seven is digital innovations. Um, we won't get into the details of each of those uh, at the moment, but are happy to respond as we move forward. Uh, I'm joined by three people here on the call uh, today. Uh, as I noted, Chris Kelly, our president and CEO of MGM Springfield. Uh, also from our corporate team are two individuals who have been very involved with the development of the seven point plan uh, across the entire enterprise. Uh, and they will um, primarily uh, address uh, questions regarding the plan and the details of MGM Resorts approach. And they are Aisha Molino, our Senior Vice President of Government Affairs for MGM Resorts International, and uh, a name and, and person familiar to many of you, Pat Madamba, uh, our Senior Vice President and Legal Counsel for MGM Resorts International. Um, all three are on the phone uh, and are happy to answer any questions um, as we move forward. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, and before we move on to PPC, uh, Katrina, I am having difficulty finding my search function to see if I can bring Chris Kelly in. Uh, this is Kevin Nemon. Um, okay. So are Thanks. you seeing the participant screen and the find participant? I am. I've got participants up. And it's just you're not seeing the number? or I'm, I'm on the I'm, line right now. Oh, you are? Okay, great, Chris. Yeah, Good. I was able to My dial point. in. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Ter terrific. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, as a, we're, we're very lucky here to be so fluid, and thank you for everyone for tolerating those kinds of challenges. Um, okay, now moving on to Lance and, and your team. Lance, George, if you're on uh, from Language Park Casino. I am. Uh, we're good with Chris. Chris, did you want to make a comment, or we're good? Oh, oh I'm sorry. No, I think Thanks. Seth uh, handled it beautifully. Thank you, Seth. Perfect. Uh, with me today, I have uh, Greg DeMarco, who handles security and risk for uh, for the property. He'll he'll be helping out, answering some questions. We also have some folks listening in. I believe I've got Dana Fortney, our Vice President of Finance, and Kathy Lucas, our Vice President of HR. Uh, and I'll make a, a few very general quick comments before I turn it over to uh, to Greg, who can add some additional detail. Now, the first comment I'll make is is something that I heard actually you allude to as you opened, and and that is while there are certainly similarities in the challenges the, the licensees will face related to reopening, it's worth noting that our operation is is not on scale with MGM and Encore, so significant differences there. More to the point, PPC will not have to contend with the challenges associated with table games, uh, hotels, numerous entrances, etc. Additionally, and I've already heard this a few times um, from, from a few folks, our plan is evolving and our thoughts today will inevitably change as we, uh, as we come to learn more. And to that point, uh, given what our state is experiencing related to the coronavirus outbreak relative to other states in which Penn National operates, we anticipate a, a far later reopening and learnings from those reopenings around the country will help inform and inevitably change our plans. Certainly, uh, we will gladly accept those learnings, which should contribute to a far smoother reopening. 
And finally, while we have a detailed reopening plan with detailed coronavirus protocols, this is most certainly uncharted territory for all of us, and there will be surprises. And we will react swiftly and quickly as, uh, as other industries are doing around the country. Greg, I don't know if you wanted to jump in or sit tight. Uh, I see, um, Mr. DeMarco, did you want to add in? Yeah, I'll be very brief. Um, you know, Madam Chair and Commissioners, our main objective of our COVID-19 plan, which has been stressed, will continue to evolve to meet or exceed the recommended CDC state local health guidelines for our business. We continue to have open dialogue with our local public health officials. A plan um, covers an array of items, including uh, in part the following, social distance, um, guidelines for front and back of the house, hygiene, cleaning, sanitation protocols, PPE, screening of team members, team members training. We continue to monitor local, state, federal guidelines. We're also in contact with our sister properties as they reopen and gather further best practices and opportunities. As we go through today's round table, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have for our COVID-19 protocols. If I don't have an answer, I will ensure to follow up with you promptly. Thank you. Thank you, and, and we do give that um, permission for that uh, to all of, to all of you who are answering questions today. And and Lance, you you noted quite properly that we we have um, the advantage of learning from other jurisdictions, and we'll take advantage of that. Sadly, it's not for a great reason, but it it will help us and inform us in a way that. Uh, other states um, won't have that advantage, so we appreciate we appreciate that input, and I know that Karen and team are already really monitoring what's happening around the country. So thank you, and thank you, Greg. Thank you to all. Um, as I said, I would I would give the um, uh, start the ball rolling by asking the first question. I thought I'd I'd uh, I'd ask you, Lance. Um, <clears throat> you are, in fact, uh, PPC is um, our longest standing licensee and our only slots parlor. So I wondered if you could please describe your plans in a little bit more detail regarding physical distancing for slot machines and players. And then we'll turn to Chris and Brian uh, and or their teams afterwards, thank you. Yeah, I think I'll uh, quickly turn this over to Greg. I'll make a couple of comments high level and then turn it over to Greg, but social distancing, um, which ties obviously directly to, to occupancy. And so our general thoughts, absent a, a governor's order, which obviously will guide a lot of this or these decisions, certainly when we reopen, we anticipate we're reopening with less than 50% of our current gaming positions. But again, that's going to change. But for round numbers right now, uh, I think we're in the neighborhood of about 550 is kind of what we're thinking. That number is going to change inevitably, but we currently operate with, I believe, 1,330-ish gaming positions. And so while not a precise number, certainly something that will be in the neighborhood of 550. Uh, again, I don't want to get too far out in front of this. That is absent any governor's order. Greg, did you want to add additional detail as far as how we're going to handle line queuing, uh, social distancing? And this is with respect to the slot machines only at this okay. time. Yeah, uh, for, for social distance, a couple of things kind of really quickly. Um, in the areas of the property where lines uh, for customers normally form, uh, we will have signage to remind customers to continue standing six feet apart to comply with the social distance best practice. We're gonna manage the slot floor player services in a manner that will address social distance for patrons, for example, some of the best practices that we're learning and reviewing are by turning off selected slot machines, open extra window, uh, open every other window for player services, extra chairs to be removed um, out of front of the machine. Uh, and then the guests that are not following social distance guidelines may be warned or asked to leave if they don't comply. Do I have questions from my fellow commissioners to follow up on that? Commit wave hand. Commissioner Cameron, that worked. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see you all again, with or without beards. Um, I just had a question about, you know, you mentioned a lot about, um, you know, enforcing physical distancing. 
Um, and I just, I read some comments in the plans about that. Um, are you going to encourage people when you say enforce, are you talking about uh, asking people to leave? What are your thoughts on how to do this respectfully and obviously by uh, de-escalating in situations? Yeah, so customer service comes first. So for PPC, I mean, our, my thought process, especially for security, as our security officers are roving ro ro the gaming floor, um, obviously we're going to make sure people are moving, they're in transit, um, if they're stationary and, and not staying within those uh, social distance, also using customer service and speaking to them and having them uh, to depart the areas. And again, having that conversation, I think a lot of the customers and team members will be well aware of what's going on and I think they'll practice social distancing themselves. Okay. Anyone else on their thoughts on how to encourage folks to comply? Sure, go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, we also believe every other machine should be not only turned off, but have the chair removed. We will have additional security. We have already printed 1,088 signs for the front of the house that will remind our guests and our employees in the back of the house to keep their distance from one another, to continue to wash their hands. We'll also be sanitizing all the machines every hour. Initially, you'll see in our plan, it said every four hours. We have changed that in our next version. It will say every hour. And we're putting the staffing schedules together this week to accomplish that consistently. Um, along with that, everyone that's in a gaming position in front of a slot machine at this time would be required to have a mask per state and city ordinances, and we will comply with all. So we think based on all of that, we've got a firm plan on how to keep people safe and distanced apart. Um, and hopefully uh, just their, their sense of mind will keep them apart. Yeah, I, I'm hopeful of that as well, although watching some of the news, you see that that's not happening in places that are trying to open around the country, not necessarily casinos, but restaurants, uh, other settings. So I just, uh, I figured you'd spend some time thinking about this one. I just wanted to hear more. Thank you. Thank you. Any, uh, uh, MGM, did you want to chime in or on the slot machine placement? Sure. This is uh, Pat Madamba uh, with MGM. Uh, first, just just a, um, a couple introductory comments. Um, first, ours like wins and pens is a living document. Um, I expect it will certainly not be static and I expect it to change. Uh, it's going to change as a result of real world data points that we have, as well as the rest of the industry and the rest of the country. We are uh, collectively learning about this virus more and more every day. Uh, I absolutely expect that we will have other properties open before Massachusetts opens. Uh, it is likely that one of our properties will be open in the next 10 days um, outside of Massachusetts. Uh, we look at this as a collaborative exercise uh, with the state um, as we go forward, uh, frankly, into what is generally uh, the unknown. Uh, because we're not, MGM is not a, a healthcare or public health um, expert. We engaged experts ourselves as Wynn did. Uh, we engaged uh, Dr. Shannon McGarry who has led the team. Uh, there are others. Uh, she's the Vice President of Health Services for Holden Corporation. She's also a visiting scientist at uh, Harvard School of Public Health, uh, which is right in your neighborhood. Um, our, our procedures are um, in line with those of Wynn and Penn, uh, generally speaking. Uh, we will be turning off uh, in terms of, I'll call them physical barriers uh, to um, have appropriate distancing. We will be turning off, or should I say disabling, uh, every other slot machine, uh, removing stools. Um, all of our guest-facing employees are going to be trained in terms of looking for and encouraging people that are gathering. Uh, we are hopeful uh, um, that uh, people will as well um, simply distance themselves. There are places, uh, as, you, as, as was noted, that people aren't keeping that distance, but there's a whole heck of a place, a lot of places where people are keeping their distance. You go into the grocery stores, for example, and you see people that are, you know, I'll call it following the rules. Um, 
in terms of cleaning. We'll be continuously cleaning our slot machines. Um, it's really going to depend uh, to a large extent on what the visitation levels are in terms right. of how many times the machine gets cleaned. Um, and we're going to have to learn as we go forward. And we'll have a lot of those data points in terms of the, the general public um, uh, when they come back to casinos and what numbers uh, before we over, ever open Springfield, uh, most likely. Thank, thank you, Pat. Um, and, and again, just trying to keep our framework, we're going to, we were talking strictly about the slots and the physical, uh, the, the physical spacing. And I think we got a general idea, but do I, I want to make sure my commission, fellow commissioners don't have any more questions for that particular topic. Okay, I, I, I'm going to proceed as if we were in our physical space in our, our offices and turn to my right and ask Commissioner Cameron, do you have a question under, again, our category of physical and social distancing? Do you have an, another question? And just if you'd like to direct it to the, the licensee, that would be great. Uh, no, I asked a question, so I'm fine to let my fellow commissioners ask a question. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, moving on to Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I do want to start off with saying that the plans are um, very helpful in terms of us as a group, as a regulatory body, trying to figure out how to go forward from here. And I know we're all in a bit of sus uh, suspended animation waiting for the governor's advisory board on reopening the recommendations from public health and acknowledging that, you know, for better or for worse, we will be learning from entities that are going to open before us. So some of my thoughts are more just comments than questions. Uh, in terms of social distancing, um, I, is, are there going to be any areas, and not just restricting the slots, where controlling the flow in terms of one ways or uh, thinking about Encore's lobby in terms of trying to, you know, is that going to be sort of a, a rotary around in the, in the which direction you're allowed to travel, whether that plays into any of this or whether that's simply not feasible um, going forward. Uh, and then, should we, should we pause with that good question, Commissioner O'Brien, and, and ask for feedback on that? Uh, certainly. Okay, and then we'll go back to your next question. Because I saw, um, I did see Brian uh, indicate an interest in answering that. So, Great. Commissioner O'Brien, excellent question. And we agree, we want to reduce all cross traffic as much as possible. So, we've already walked the property safely at six, to six feet apart with masks on earlier, uh, about two weeks ago, looked at how everybody would come in on the right set of doors and then have only that second set of doors that goes into the casino. That would be entrance only by Watches of Switzerland. We would have the proper staffing lines and signage that would only allow one-way traffic. Traffic coming out of the casino would come out by the drugstore and then only be allowed to e exit the building towards uh, the Sinatra side of the main lobby. We would not allow people to circle around that space. We already have rope and stanchions in the spaces now set up and the cameras are being set up in the next week. So uh, we really are preparing to have one way traffic only. We're reducing the amount of exits, entrances to really control the flow and limit the number of people in each space. So excellent point and yes, uh, it is a concern of ours. That's why we're addressing it. Yeah, similar to, to Encore's approach as it relates to limiting entrances and exits, we currently have three, as you're well aware. And I think what we're kicking around here is whether we can take that, and I think we can take that down to the valet entrance would be the main entrance, and then the racing exit would be the main exit. And so there would be designated entrances and exits that would allow us in the rare case, who knows, of how many folks are going to show up. Uh, nobody really knows, but if we do have to queue people and maintain or count occupancy, I would prefer to control it in that way. Greg, um, I mean, Pat or, or Seth or, or Greg, actually, too. Any I problem? GM is in a slightly, probably more challenging structural setup, so you may not be in a position to answer that question now, but. We are, it, it, there's a number of entrances into the Springfield property, and we are looking at the feasibility of limiting the number of entrances, and, and if we do that, and it's likely that we will, um, which entrances uh, to keep open. 
Uh, and the, the other question I had in terms of um, mostly the slots, but also in terms of physical distancing, um, I, I can't give props to whose plan it was in, but somebody mentions doing um, almost like cell phone alerts if you're waiting for a table to make sure you don't have people congregating and to keep the space going um, and using mobile apps to do that. And I didn't know if there's any way, uh, I, again, again, it's all gonna depend on who shows up, how many people are waiting for slot machines, you know, do you have a crowd or don't you? But since there's going to have to be monitoring in terms of wiping these down between patrons, is there some way to do that kind of an app too, where you don't have people maybe hovering and waiting for what may be more limited slot machines as you ramp up? Uh, we're actually, I'm uh, sorry. Sure, go right ahead, Brian. Thank we're you. Actually, use, and it's a great point, uh, Commissioner O'Brien. We're actually using technology in a few different ways. Um, we're going to use Mobile Responder, which is a part of the IGT system that will alert us to which, uh, which machines actually need service. We're also going to set a second feature on how often we need to clean each machine so we can make the hour interval, and at which point we, can, we will be in the physical spaces at all times to control the crowds to make sure people aren't waiting or queuing up for machines. In addition to that, we'll be also uh, calculating or watching how many people are coming in and out of the casino space. And at any point, if we need to close the doors or control or take a step back, we certainly will. Um, and to your point with technology, we're gonna do the same thing at every restaurant and hostess stand. When someone comes in, we're not gonna allow them to stand at the front. We will take their cell phone and through uh, the technology we have in seven rooms, we will automatically text them uh, when their, their table is ready. We do not want any congregating anywhere, and I know that's gonna be a tall order to achieve in any space, especially in our industry. But we believe we're putting the right protocols in place, the right technology in place, and using our ladies and gentlemen to keep people separate. I know everybody wants to come together, but this is one place you're gonna have fun apart. Yeah, we fully expect to control capacity uh, at the door to ensure that we don't have too many folks inside the facility. And similar to Encore, there's technology at the game level where they can call an attendant, and we plan on encouraging folks to call an attendant. Um, in addition to us providing uh, disinfectant wipes, if they would prefer to call an attendant to come over and wipe that machine down for them, they'll simply hit a button. If MGM wanted to respond or... Okay. We, are, we are implementing a number of technological innovations in our facilities um, with respect to virtual queuing and what have you. Uh, we haven't extended that at the moment over to the gaming space where we'd certainly be willing to do that if, if in fact uh, business demand uh, justifies. Um, with respect to table games, there was a specific question about table games and cleaning of table games. And the, pro the procedure we're, we're presently considering is that when a person leaves uh, a spot at a table, that a, 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 a lammer would be placed there uh, until that space is cleaned. Um, whether it's the responsibility of uh, the environmental service folks um, or the uh, a games employee, a floor person, certainly not a dealer who is responsible for uh, protecting the float and game integrity. Uh, but there will be someone cleaning uh, each of those spots as people uh, move in and out of positions. Great, thank you. That's that's all I had. Thanks, Commissioner. Then I'll move on to Commissioner Zuniga. You are at my left if we were at the office. Uh, if you have a question, we're still under the physical and social distancing. If you have a question on that topic. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am just uh, curious, and I know um, you all deal with all kinds of um, customer complaints uh, um, under normal circumstances. I can imagine this, uh, you know, in, in this environment, there may be additional ones about maybe somebody saying those two people are not observing social distancing uh, appropriately uh, or what have you. Um, can anybody uh, just in general speak to whether they envision that these might require some additional resources or rethinking of what you already normally do. Go ahead, uh, uh, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, listen, customer service has always been something that we've led with and we believe 
Customer service is paramount in our industry. However, this is the one time in history that I believe health and safety trump everything. And so we will make sure that our, our employees and our leaders are addressing issues where there is a lack of compliance with what we're asking. And if customers don't want to comply, there may be a point where we have to ask them to leave. We want this to be a safe, fun environment for all concerned, and not just for the customers, but for our employees and their families as well. So we have a responsibility here to ensure a wonderful, safe environment, and whatever it takes, that will be done. Um, and so we're gonna have additional training and certification for every employee and every leader on how to address these situations, politely, and then firmly if there's not a lack of compliance. And so I think it's really important and it's a great point because we know uh, some people just don't like to follow the rules. Well, that's not gonna be acceptable in today's world. Thank you, Brian. Does anybody else want to chime in? Uh, I see Greg, uh, perhaps. Uh, maybe that's Pat, is that? Sure, we, yeah, we're, we're, this is Pat Madame, I'm sorry, Thank we are you. completely, we are completely aligned uh, with WIN. Uh, we are going to absolutely make sure that we have provided um, an environment uh, that's, you know, uh, a safe one. And um, for our employees and guests, um, we're hopeful that uh, we don't have uh, guests that will need uh, to be asked to leave the premises. And of course, we're going to engage um, our guests in a way uh, that uh, hopefully does not lead to um, you know, difficult situations between a guest and, and one of our employees. But nevertheless, we're completely aligned with Wayne. And if someone needs to leave, uh, we will make sure that they leave. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brad. Okay, uh, anything further, PPC? Yes, uh, similar approach to both licensees. Uh, we lead with customer service. Um, we, you know, deal with uh, crazy Fridays and Saturday nights, um, and so we, we're used to responding, listening to our customers, and handling any disputes, and really vetting it out and ensuring that um, everybody leaves happy if, if necessary. Um, again, um, if someone doesn't want to comply with the social distance rule, we're going to ask them to leave. Thank you. Thank Commissioner Stephens. Do you want to, do you have Enrique, a question? Did you have another question? Do you, okay. Oh, yeah, I don't, uh, Commissioner Zuniga, I think that we can move on to Commissioner Stebbins so for a second. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, colleagues, and, and thank our licensees. Um, most of my questions have been answered by my colleagues or asked by my colleagues already. Um, I guess to, to take a step back before folks even step foot on the property, uh, I was wondering, or I hope that each of you would have an aggressive communications plan to convey your new rules, regulations, safety protocols to your patrons, hopefully before they even step on property. Um, and I'd be interested to hear what you can share about those at this time. Uh, uh, I see, uh, Brian, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in addition to posting our plan publicly, and we'll continue to do that as we revise our plans, we're also shooting a series of videos. These videos will be for two, two purposes. One set of videos for our, our employees to help with training and show them exactly what's going to be expected before they return. They'll actually be able to watch these videos prior to returning and engaging in work. And it'll be a part of the training and recertification. We are also uh, recording a set of videos with everyone wearing the proper PPE, with the proper distancing, with the proper signage, to help our customers get comfortable with what we're doing. Listen, just going to the grocery store nowadays is a new experience, and they have you going down one way or down the other, and you've got your mask and the, where you have to put your cart. So we wanna make sure that there's no surprises for our customers. We've been communicating with our customers every week with newsletters, and we're gonna start increasing more informational, how we're going to re-engage with our customers, how they're gonna re-engage with us to get them comfortable so when they come back, there's no surprises. I don't want anybody to be surprised we're gonna take their temperature. So we will, in advance, try to communicate with as many people as possible. 
um, and we've been communicating through the media in the last several days since we posted our plan to help people understand what it's going to feel like, what it's going to look like. It's an excellent question and communication is key right now for everybody. Thanks, Brian. Of course. Excellent MGM question. Or PPC? Let's see, Greg. Yes, go ahead, Mr. DeMarco. Yeah, so uh, I, I think this is a great question. Communication is gonna be really key for us. It's, it's gonna be very helpful for us to provide that awareness and give that awareness to our customers as they return. They, they should know what our plan is. Um, and we've been doing that um, since the suspended operations. We've done that with our customers and team members. Uh, not only are we gonna do training, we're gonna have signage and continue uh, awareness uh, communication through all different platforms, even social media, uh, prior to customers arriving back to property. The only thing I would add to that is our CEO has been sending out periodic communication. And in general, we, they are aware that changes are coming. The challenge we have is we don't know exactly what specifics are in the queue. And that certainly varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. And so we have a property specific communication already in the queue and we are awaiting final details before we send out that piece of information. Thank you. Um, this is uh, Pat Madamba from MGM. Uh, like my colleagues, uh, uh, we also published our plan. Uh, that was earlier this week along with uh, press releases and uh, are actively socializing that plan. Uh, it is available on our website. Uh, we are uh, using our, our rather large uh, millions of customers uh, deep database with MLife and actively socializing it with those who most frequent our properties and uh, our members of MLife. Uh, we will have absolutely have training of our staff uh, before they come back. And it's because of that extensive training and that we've communicated to our regulators around the country that when we do, when we are ready to reopen, uh, that we would like at least 10 to 14 days to get ready to call people back uh, and to make sure they're properly trained, uh, make sure we have dry runs in place to make sure that everyone understands what the other what the procedures are and what have you. Um, we will have extensive signage throughout the property uh, with cues as to what you're going to be doing. We will have on the floor cues as to as for social distancing. Um, but it's a very it's a holistic approach with through through the internet. Uh, through com in email communication and what have you with our guests, as well as when you come on site, appropriate signage uh, that will be throughout our facility. Thank you. Do any of my co fellow commissioners have uh, questions for the, uh, as follow up questions to those presented? Or in terms of comments, I see no, no, somehow I'll set on that. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Stebbins, you're all set? Yes, I am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. So I think then if we don't have an, an, uh, any follow-up questions, uh, if you do have another question, we'll you know, put it to the side and we, maybe ha we may have time to return to it at the end. But we'll move on to the more the specific subject matter of hygiene, cleaning, and sanitation protocols. Um, I will turn uh, to Commissioner Cameron, um, if you would like to ask now. Uh, yes, and this could be for um, any of the three. Uh, all of you, all of the plans talk about, uh, obviously, frequent cleaning, um, hand sanitizing, uh, wipes. And I'm just wondering, as you prepare to open multiple properties around the country, are you having difficulty obtaining those items? I know that there's shortages. Um, is that something you are, you've been able to do effectively or you're still working on? Uh, I'll speak for, oh, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, go ahead George. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I missed Brian's hand. Bri I, I did see Brian's hand, thank you. <laughs> It's quite all right. So we've been working with our properties in China, in Kotai, and Macau, and we have commandeered 1.9 million surgical masks. Uh, for our property, we already have 70 uh, disinfectant sanitizer wipes, uh, the dispensers themselves. Uh, we have 40 different uh, hand sanitizer dispensers. Uh, we've also got uh, all of the equipment that we need. We have 47 
different electrostatic guns that will uh, dispense L L our Ecolab peroxide multi-service cleaner disinfectant, say that three times fast. <laughs> uh, and it's used to really uh, against emerging viral pathogens. And so, and it's also on the end list for the EPA. So we've gone through and got all the equipment. We have all of the things that we need. I will tell you that hand sanitizer and wipes have not been easy to commandeer. We've had teams of people looking for it. We now have trucks of it uh, in North America. So this has not been an easy task. And we do know that it will be a continued challenge to stay up with that. So uh, supply chain will be critical. And But through our, our partners or our sister property in Macau, we have some great connections to sources. So it, it right now it looks very good. Excellent. Uh, uh, Pat, I see that maybe you're chiming in. Sure, we, 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 we like Win um, have been frankly stockpiling supplies uh, for, for the reopening since we closed in terms of masks, cleaning products, disinfectants, and what have you. Um, it's, it really is no secret. Wipes are challenging uh, and we continue to search for wipes uh, for our property uh, as are most people in this industry uh, as well as many, many other industries. Uh, but by and large, um, we have secured the necessary supply chains uh, to support our plan. Same as what uh, Pat just said. We're good across the board. The the lone exception, the most challenging one to get your hands on right now are disinfecting wipes. With that being said, I think this is likely the only benefit of, of reopening late. Um, you know, I think the supply chain is coming back online in pieces. Um, you know, good news. I think all of us are expecting a, a much later reopening, which in this case will probably serve to benefit us. If I could just do a follow-up question to uh, Commissioner Cameron's, does that, uh, are, are you able to uh, make the same accommodation to the back of the house and employees? You know, the eyes, the public eyes will be on the front of the house are you able to offer the same level of sanitation and hygiene for all the employees and ready access given how busy they are? Uh, I'll go to Brian. Uh, we are. Uh, we've got the same number of uh, materials in the back. We've got uh, the same distance between tables in our employee dining room, hand sanitizer near the employee dining room entrance and exit. Uh, so the same exact type of facilities and parameters we put in the front, we put in the back for our employees. Seth, or, um, we, or, we, we likewise are okay. treating the back of the house. Uh, this is Pat Madamba, I'm sorry. Um, no we likewise are treating the back of the house uh, with equal care as the front of the house. I'm actually sitting in Brigada Casino Hotel now, and when I went to lunch, there is in fact a new, it's not that new now, it's about a month old, but there's a new cleaning station, for example, as you walk into uh, the employee dining room. Uh, but we will give every opportunity to our employees um, to wash their hands, um, to make sure that they have the proper PPE. Uh, as Wynn noted, um, all of our employees are going to be required to wear a mask, whether they're in the public area or not in the public area. Um, so yes, we, we are, we're not differentiating between the back of the house and the front of the house. Greg, it's yeah, certainly the same approach um, in all of our plans, whether it's coronavirus specific related or a more general reopening plan, there is a front of house section and there is a back of house section. So we are thinking through both sides of our operation. Thank you. And uh, just a follow up, uh, Commissioner Zuniga had made sure that the public would have the opportunity to express any concerns. And I would ask too that you think about the, the channels of reporting for employees. They're gonna be great um, help to you to inform you of any concerns they have. So um, just a, a reminder for the channel for them to be able to express any concerns. Moving forward, um, Commissioner O'Brien on hygiene. Uh, just one question, I think more um, probably for Brian at Encore is the, can you just really brief thumbnail explanation of what uh, e-mist, the electrostatic application system is? You talk about disinfecting overnight. I'm just curious what that is. Certainly. Um, there's many different electrostatic systems. This is just one. 
Um, you actually put a peroxide-based disinfectant into this machine. It has an electrical charge at the very end of the dispenser. It creates a fine mist that then lays more evenly and more thoroughly across every uh, surface. And then 45 seconds later, you can wipe it all up. Uh, with the electric charge, that charge attaches to the surface and clings to the surface and removes the disinfectant or pathogen that's there. Uh, so it's by these experts that we've been working with, they strongly recommended the system. What's key is that you make sure you have the right level of peroxide, which is uh, what we're using as the EPA end list. And as long as it's on that list, it's been certified and it's effective. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions for Brian on that? Okay, Commissioner Zuniga. Hi, um, I don't know. I don't know if this question quite fits in the category, but uh, but I think it's very uh, important to um, to have us and especially the public uh, know a little bit more of what happens behind the scenes. And I'm talking specifically about um, the HVAC systems. Um, you all have a very new, fairly sophisticated systems in your buildings designed to operate 24-7 uh, with multiple backup, automation, etc. cetera. Um, so if, if anybody can talk, uh, and I'm not uh, thinking very technically, but in general, about what about those systems uh, should be cause for comfort or what enhancements uh, might you be considering in implementing um that uh, uh that might be good for for all of us to um to know uh brian it looks like uh hi brian um i think we're all three very fortunate to have built our buildings very recently um and and when we look at what we've built uh we were recently awarded the platinum award for lead certification and so our air circulation is as good as it gets um, the only thing we're going to do is replace our filtration system a bit more often. Um, and so we already have great air circulation, great air flow. Um, the building has been built beyond code. And so I can't speak for uh, the other two licensees, but we've all been built in the last several, you know, last couple of years. So I would assume everybody has similar uh, physical plants, but I can speak for ours and say that we're just going to uh, increase the frequency of filtration uh, change. That's it. Yeah, Thank my you. my uh, elementary knowledge of the HVAC systems is is probably worse than yours, uh, Commissioner Zuniga. But um, we are new. We are lead gold, and I do know that uh, from the non gaming side, uh, Dominic, our our director, uh, has told me that we'll be increasing the air dampers to increase the fresh outside air that will be circulated through the facility. So typically we rotate those and not all of them are on at one time. We will, however, going forward, when we do reopen, have all of those air dampers on. This is um, Pat Madamba from MGM. Hi, Pat. Um, sure. MGM Springfield was actually the first uh, casino resort property that was uh, granted the highest lead certification with just platinum, uh, just a little plug uh, for Springfield. It really is a combination of, of filtering, uh, fresh air circulation, um, humidity and temperature control, and we will be maximizing the HVAC uh, to, to enhance uh, the air quality uh, in the facility, and that is addressed uh, in our plan that was uh, submitted earlier this week. Yeah, we are aware of that. Um that recognition and have touted it, uh, Pat, but it, I think it was a great observation on Brian's part to note that from, um, from Massachusetts, the three facilities are relatively new and have the advantage of those systems. So, uh, and, and the advantage of, of really being environmentally, ecologically uh, sound and, and, and well certified. So thank you. Okay, Commissioner Stebbins, do you have a question? Uh, Commissioner Zunica, any follow-up? Good, thank you. Commissioner uh, Stebbins. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this hygiene question kind of extends uh, not just to you as operators, but some of you have different operators of businesses within your sites. Um, can you just share what plans or what conversations you've had with those 
restaurant owners or movie theater owners or ancillary businesses that are on site and make sure that they're kind of complying or following your same plans uh, with respect to hygiene and sanitation. I see uh, Brian, hand up. Thank uh, you. I have spoken with our partners. Uh, that's uh, Big Night Entertainment Group, uh, the Fratelli Group, uh, Frank and Nick from the North End, as well as Duncan. Uh, all of them have a copy of our plan and we've offered our assistance. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't manage their spaces, uh, obviously per the agreement, but we've made them uh, very much aware and rock walk them through our plans. Uh, we're ready to assist them if at all they need that assistance. Thanks, Brian. Lance, do you want to chime in? Sure. We've got the, uh, oops, disregard that security radio. Uh, we've got two that come to mind. Duncan, um, they do have protocols that they're using right now in some of their facilities. And so we have absolutely been in communication with Duncan. And then the second one, it's a bit different for us, obviously, is racing. And so that plan is being developed in tandem with the horsemen as we speak right now. There's a lot of back and forth. And uh, that one's taking a little bit longer. It's a bit different and uh, certainly a bit different than a Dunkin' Donuts or a food offering. So we're working through that as we speak. Thank you. MGM? Sure, I'm happy to address this one. Um, at MGM Springfield, all of the food and beverage outlets, with, with two exceptions, which I'll mention, are MGM resorts owned and operated, so they will follow our, our uh, company procedures. Um, we, we have had some initial dialogue, but we'll um, be certain that um, our two additional, our two tenants, which are Regal Theaters, which I'm sure has, um, as a national um, uh, cinema chain, will have their own um, vetted procedures. We'll make sure that they're consistent. And then uh, Kringle Candle, which has some limited food and beverage offerings, um, we'll make sure that um, when we're ready to uh, reopen that um, we're all in lockstep on appropriate um, measures. And that one is a standalone building, so they're um, a little bit unique. Uh, it has its own building envelope. Thank you. I think we have a little bit more time I, um, with respect to this topic. I think uh, I'm very interested in uh, learning anything more about technological innovations that will really help on the sanitization, touchless opportunities. You've mentioned a few. I think um, to the extent that they are possible, um, possibly available, I, it would be interesting to learn about them. I understand they may not be implemented uh, because of you know each of your own individual needs. If anybody wishes to um, address that in terms of touchless opportunities with respect to slots machines, if you can. Chair. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Sorry about that. I know I probably moved right. around on your screen. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, just a few things that, that we've uh, got engaged with uh, prior to actually closing. Um, we're using the Amazon Alexa units in all the guest rooms. Uh, you literally can walk into a room and speak all the commands to get the lights on, everything else on and off. Um, so we're going to continue to use that. We've loaded all our menus in a digital form uh, onto our website and they will be continually updated. So when you go into our one or one of our restaurants, we'll have a QR code. You can either go straight to encoreboston.com or use the QR code and the menu will pop up. You won't even need to hold a menu. Uh, we're also gonna do single sheet uh, pieces of paper, no fancy menus. We're gonna forego that for the time being. Um, and then Apple Pay, Google Pay, all of that's been installed throughout the resort as well. Wherever we can reduce the, the touching and the touchless uh, interactions, we believe that's best for all concerned. Uh, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, did you, you didn't raise your hand, did you? Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have a follow up on that from either um, uh, PPC or MGM? Yeah, a couple things from PPC side, uh, real quick. Um, Apple Pay, Google Pay, absolutely. Um, and then maybe more of the blocking and tackling. Uh, single use menus, absolutely. Um, and then one that I'm sure that, that Encore and, uh, and MGM will transition to as well, certainly we're seeing it, 
in other industries, but it is likely we certainly try to transition away from direct mail and simply go with email notifications of anything that we have upcoming to reduce additional touch points. And Pat? Uh, we as well, sure. We as well are going to have uh, digital menus that are available on a personal mobile device uh, via a QR code. Uh, somebody can simply just scan the QR code in the and the menu will come up for a particular facility, uh, virtual queues and, uh, uh, for dining reservations, um, contactless uh, check-in options, uh, mobile check-in, self-service key dispensers, uh, and what have you. So to, again, uh, limit the actual physical touch points that one has to, has to navigate uh, in order to enjoy our facility. Thank you. Fellow commissioners, do you have another question in this category? Okay, then we'll move on to uh, staffing and operations. This is, your plans are very thorough, of course, and we understand they're evolving, uh, but this is, a, of course, a very interesting area that the public will have an interest in as well. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I had a question for um, Lance, I think, uh, with PPC. I spent the morning in a in a racing hearing followed by a racing meeting and there were many many questions about racing and how that will uh, reopen i suspect you may have other racetracks around the country who may be ready to open before we are here and i'm just wondering with regard to staffing and operations you have a little bit in your plan about it but is there anything more you can share about um, reopening racing as far as timing or what it will look like when we do reopen? Just um, timing will be difficult, obviously, because that'll be jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But as far as what you're anticipating, is it racing without, without patrons? Is it, um, you know, some way to, um, you know, I know one of our big concerns certainly is the amount of time and the individuals in the, uh, the paddock area, yeah. um, you know, Lasix, all of those. I, I know you're not the racing um, expert, but I'm just I'm just looking for if you have a little more about what the company is thinking yeah. as far as getting racing back opening safely. Yeah, it's a big uh, issue for us as a company. As you know, I think we operate a dozen around the country, and so I believe the first one to reopen will be Charlestown in West Virginia. A little bit different there, as you know better than I do. That's uh, that's thoroughbred. Right. I believe that might be opening next week, if, if I remember correctly. They will be opening without spectators. And so I think for us, if for whatever reason, um, they would be permitted to reopen in advance of the casino, that would occur, at least from my vantage point, without spectators. Um, as we think about additional thoughts related to racing, I think one more thoughts I've heard from Chris, um, Mackerlin, is that rather than simply use the paddock, we would incorporate the use of the barns that would allow us to spread out the horses as well as the horsemen. And so I think that is something that is being employed and deployed at Charlestown. And I think you'd see the same thing here, specifically and precisely to what your concern was, a congregation of 50 or 75 people. If we can go into all of the barns, that's something that would have to be approved by, by the commission. But if we could do that, that would allow us to spread the folks out and take advantage of social distancing. Okay, great. That's, uh, that's good to hear. Thank you. Yep. Commissioner O'Brien. Sorry, just taking me a second to unmute. Um, I guess the only question I had, um, again, for not to pick on Brian and Encore, but um, the detail sort of probably left me with some more questions. Um, there's a comment in the plan about the, the bar service and being able to staff that in a certain way that there wouldn't be sort of bunching or crowding of the employees with the drink service. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure, and from the employee standpoint, we will make sure that they're only using their stations. They won't be able to cross over and use each other's stations. So. All equipment will be used by one person, and that goes throughout the entire facility. Anybody that's using any type of equipment, it will have to be sanitized before another person can use it. Um, just a, a fact for what we're gonna need to get used to. We're not sharing anymore. 
um, with respect to the customers, we are going to take the bar stools and put them in groups of two with sufficient space in between. We have to assume that if uh, I don't, people are gonna come as couples and they're gonna wanna sit together. Um, so that was what we were gonna start with. And I think we're all learning at the same time. If that doesn't work, then we'll separate those as well. But uh, we wanna have sufficient distance between uh, all patrons, unless of course they can. Thank you. Of Commissioner Bryan, could I just ask a follow-up? Because I'm not sure if, I, if um, I'm imagining the, the use of the computerized bars in the back. Will you be using that in the back of the house still? Yes. And so then you, for, for the casino service bars, is that what yes. you're speaking of? Yes, they will continue to be utilized. I'm not sure if that's what Commissioner O'Brien was asking about, but I do remember that that's where a queue could naturally um, ga uh, gather. In the we part of the house, so we've actually quadrupled our output. We used to have one bartender per eight servers. Now we have four stations for eight servers. So there's actually less of a queue and less of a wait. And our, our service time to the customer has improved three to four to four times over. So um, I don't anticipate there being an issue in the back of the house if that's what you were referencing. I saw, I'm sorry if I misunderstood your question. No, I, it's just a follow up um, in terms of when you said the equipment will be for each individual. Of course, um, if you're a server and you're using that comp the computerized bar, um, they won't have their own computerized bar to go to, but there would be, how do, how do you imagine that working? Yeah, so two different instances. I, I was first speaking to Commissioner O'Brien about the actual bars, the front right. facing with customers, which they'll have their own station. In yeah. that instance, they'll have a uh, disinfectant wipe uh, dispenser right there. They'll be able to use a disinfectant wipe to basically wipe off the buttons and then use it themselves. And so they'll be trained to do that in yes. order, okay. And it'll have to be disinfected in between each use. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner O'Brien, did you have another question for either PPC or? Uh, I did, no, I didn't, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Commissioner Zuniga. Yeah, just a general question, uh, and I know this is very much in, um, it will depend as you said earlier uh, as to the demand and the need, but do you foresee anything different uh, from a 24 hour operation? Um, some period of closure, some day or something? Um, as a starting point? Um, I see no um, responses. Yeah. So Commissioner, right. Zuniga, just to clarify, uh, uh, to clarify, no. you're, you're asking just at the beginning whether there might be a restriction on hours, perhaps for yes, either cleaning or other. And then, and, and then I guess the follow-up would be, how does that impact staffing, et cetera? Okay, uh, is that Brian? Yes, please. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we have been exploring a, another option of a four-day opening versus a seven-day. We want to approach this very cautiously. And as Governor Baker has stated, a slow roll into these new environments and new engaging with customers and businesses uh, may be beneficial to all. Uh, we are also looking at it as a potential uh, way of approaching our business. Uh, so nothing's definite at this point, and certainly we'd love to have further conversations with all of you. Thank you. Pat, I think, Pat, you were trying to chime in, perhaps? Sure. Uh, we're going to have, as I, I, I noted previously, uh, a lot of data, I suspect, uh, at our other, from our other properties uh, before we reopen uh, in Springfield. And that would really drive the decision as to whether or not we would want to limit the, the hours of that particular facility uh, or particular amenities uh, in that facility. And so um, as we move along in this process, uh, we would certainly welcome uh, that flexibility uh, in collaboration uh, with the commission uh, if, we, if we do decide that it would be appropriate uh, to limit uh, the hours, days, uh, shifts, uh, what have you. Um, but again, uh, we will have uh, at least several weeks of data uh, from other properties by the time I suspect that Springfield reopens. 
A similar answer for Penn. I think we've got our first properties opening next week. Um, we'll sort of let other operations around the country dictate how we approach our hours of operation. We should have a good month, possibly, under our belt. Um, and that will certainly come in handy as we kind of make these, these very difficult decisions on hours of operation. Excellent. Any follow-up on that? Commissioner Stebbins? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Question for our licensees. This is really around employee training, and I know we've touched a little bit about it. Uh, but obviously, uh, what your team might have been required to do before this pandemic is going to change. Uh, there may need to be employee training as to how to handle a different type of dispute on the floor between patrons uh, complaining potentially about each other's behavior. Uh, some additional requirements I've seen from some of the plans about staff potentially identifying patrons who may be demonstrating uh, symptoms or being somebody who might require a temperature check. Uh, very curious about your plans and timing for kind of upskilling the folks that you're bringing back with respect to these kind of new wrinkles in the operation. Brian, did I see your hand go up? If not, I can turn to. You did not, but we do okay, have a plan to retrain. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, okay, we, we, we do have a plan to retrain everyone. To retrain everyone. It, it's a great question, uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Um, and in addition to that, there's a certification, as I mentioned, videos. Um, and we believe we'll need between 10 to 14 days advance notice to accomplish what we need to. Okay. Thanks, Brian. We, we as well, I'm sorry, we as well have expressed to all of our regulators uh, that uh, we will need lead time. Uh, 10 to 14 days is the exact ask that we have made around the country uh, so that we have uh, the time to invest in our employees to properly train them on what is going to be a, a new world uh, out of the box uh, and certainly different challenges than we've uh, ever faced before. 10 to 14 days is uh, is perfect for us. Certainly want uh, ample lead time as the other two licensees do as well. Um, and yeah, there will be significant training occurring during that 10 to 14 day window uh, in advance of our reopening. That is absolutely the plan. Okay, thank you. And I just have an, an observation or follow up on that. It's that of course we have um, our own employees who are at the gaming establishments. We have the GEU, the state police, uh, members there. We have our gaming agents and we, of course, contract the GameSense uh, advisors. And so I presume that that uh, training would be uh, in coordination with them as well. There'll be a lot of cross training that we'll, we'll want to complete. But uh, it's important for everyone to understand that we uh, will be vigilant about all their their um, health and safety needs too in order to accomplish our, our um, requirements as the regulator. I don't know if anybody wants to add into that, um, build on that observation, but um, it's just one that will operationally, of course, we're, we're keeping as a priority. All right. Um, in terms of timing, I think we can take um, more questions on this topic if we have um, any further. I know that at the beginning, uh, Brian, you did uh, talk about what you'll have for screening um, using uh, the thermal cameras. Will you be in, um, engaging that same exercise with your employees? Yes, we will. Every entrance. And, and any other safeguards for ensuring that the employees are healthy upon, um, you know, at, at the beginning of their, of their work day and then how would you deal with if uh, there is in fact any kind of illness? So we're also working on a health screening that will be done uh, via their phone, a set of questions to make sure that they're feeling well. If they're not, they're not to return to work. Um, and uh, our Las Vegas location has announced uh, in conjunction with UMC that they will be providing testing for all employees prior to coming back to work. Um, I think it's premature for our location here because I know there's others that need that those tests more than we do right now, but when the time is right, we'd love to work with you uh, and the right provider to see if that's a possibility. Thank you. 
PPC or um, MGM, uh, Greg, or thank you. Sorry, just wait to we get unmuted. Uh, no, Mr. So DeMar. We do have we do have some things in place that we're looking at, and, and we're also getting further vetting from our corporate office too, as well. But obviously, there's a questionnaire similar to what Encore had mentioned to touchless temperature check. Um, and if so, if a team member does exhibit symptoms, um, you know, prior to coming to work during a, a shift, we do have some protocols to respond to that and make sure that we make the proper notifications. Uh, and work with not only our regulators, but our local health officials. Thank you. And um, MGM, anything uh, that you want wish to add? Or are you all set? Again, again, like our colleagues, we are going to have a single point of entry into our property for our employees with uh, both a, a temperature check uh, as well as a wellness check, uh, employees that are not feeling well. Uh, will not be permitted to work. Um, and then we have the whole panoply of, of PPE uh, and other procedures that employees will um, have to abide by uh, as they go about their day working. My fellow commissioners, do you have additional questions? I see no. Oh, I see Commissioner O'Brien, thank you. I do. I had one, uh, and again, this is because we're so fluid and things change, the answer may be we don't know yet, but there was a term um, the, that a patron, particularly in the hotel, if they had an elevated temperature, would need to be medically cleared before they were allowed to return, and I didn't know if there was any further detail about what that meant or whether that was just conceptual and we're still waiting on DPH and circumstances to be able to say what that is. I've lost Brian there. Brian? Right here. You, thank you. So if you're referring to our, our plan, we're going to defer to the state. And so whatever the state decides, we'll be in compliance with. Okay. So sort of a term of art placeholder to be determined by DPH and the advisory we center. Have, yes. We already have that determined for our other jurisdiction in Nevada. We're, we're waiting here in Massachusetts and happy to comply with whatever you deem necessary and whatever the state deems necessary. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then we'll move to the last subject matter. And then if you've um, felt, you know, my fellow commissioners, if you have questions that you wish you had asked before, we'll chime in on those at the end. Okay, so screening and occupancy. This is more about uh, the screening of the patrons and the and uh, restrictions or limits on, on um, your patrons, particularly around numbers. We've seen some high level guidance being given on that. I know that things are really fluid. Question, what, Commissioner Cameron, thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is for um, Encore and MGM. I just wondered if, because of um, your experience in Macau, where there was a two week closure, if there are some um, le lessons learned that could be applicable to your properties here in the United States. Uh, I'm happy to. Oh, sorry, yes. Um, so in, in China, uh, unfortunately, when the restrictions were lifted, uh, there was a quarantine implement, or it, it implemented. So uh, the volumes of business in China have not been very high. They've been quite low. So although we are back in operation, and I believe all licensees are back in operation, uh, the business levels are quite low. We have learned what works in the back of the house and what works with our employees. Uh, we have been able to perfect the or refine the thermal imaging camera processes. So there's some things that we have learned, uh, but they really haven't experienced high volume just quite yet. MGM, in terms of your experience? We actually um, had a call with your staff um, chair uh, with the uh, general counsel of the Macau property uh, a couple weeks ago to talk through the experience in Macau. Um, as Wynn has pointed out, however, the, the number of patrons is very, very low uh, because of the limitations on the ability to cross the border uh, with mainland China. Um, there are some things that we have learned um, in terms of uh, protocols for backup house and what have you. Um, but beyond that, uh, there really is uh, a, a limited ability 
to to take a Macau environment, uh, which is very very different than one um, in the U.S. Uh, with respect to the operations. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. Do you have a question? I don't, Chair. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Zuniga. Um, well, no, I don't know if this is, uh, again, in the category, but just in general, whatever you can say, and I know, again, the plans, parts of the plans are good, uh, whatever you can say, uh, Anchor and MGM relative to the uh, table game um, operation um, that, uh, that would flow as part of this discussion, I think would be uh, welcomed by the public. Yeah, that was a, definitely a question that I wanted to circle back to, and it's, it makes sense now to interject on this. So table gaming in terms of maybe physical distancing and sanitization, is that what you're getting at in numbers? All three? Okay, excellent. Uh, I'm looking at uh, either Brian or, or Pat, because that Lance um, doesn't have to manage table games. Okay, Brian? So with table games, we really want to make sure that we are at a competitive advantage uh, from uh, the surrounding regional casinos outside of that state of Michigan. Uh, just, just, a, just a second. Um, somebody's got a big noise going on in the background. It sounded oh. like we were taking off. <laughs> Um, so we, we, we want to take an approach to, to table games. We are purchasing some of these plexiglass uh, barriers that you've seen, protective barriers that you've seen, uh, or you may have not. Uh, we're happy to share uh, photos and videos uh, for some of our tables. We really want to understand what does the customer feel comfortable with. Um, we want to make sure that there's space between all customers. Uh, we have decided that we want to have, if we're not allowed to have these partitions, uh, we'd like to have three chairs per table instead of the normal six. Um, the table positions would be one, three, and five, and then two, four, and six, and then one, three, and five. So you wouldn't get bunched up with back-to-back -back customers. Um, if we're allowed to have the plexiglass partitions, we'd like to ask permission to have four because uh, I've actually sat in one. It's like a little voting booth. Uh, you've got plexi in front of you on either side. You've got a mask. The dealer has a mask and you're just able to put your hands under. I know it sounds a bit off-putting, but you really have to see it. Uh, it wasn't that bad, and we don't really know how customers are going to, players are gonna react in this region. So I think we do have the benefit of seeing what happens down south, and I want our customers to be uh, comfortable, but I also want them to be safe. Pat? Yes, we as well um, will limit uh, the number of positions at each of our gaming tables. Um, spacing uh, customers at, at every other uh, betting spot. Um, we are exploring using a plexiglass uh, physical barrier uh, between the dealer um, and the players um, since they'll be facing each other um, either through a plexiglass barrier or a face shield for the dealer. Uh, we'll be trying them uh, shortly, uh, likely uh, shortly uh, at one of our properties that we expect will open before before uh, Memorial Weekend um, and, and the sanitization piece. Uh, I got that word right. Um, we <laughs> will be uh, <laughs> ensuring that the high touch, touch surfaces as dealers move on and off the table, uh, the, the, the incoming dealers responsible for uh, cleaning up the, 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 and sanitizing uh, the high touch um, um, gaming equipment uh, that the prior dealer um, had touched. Uh, and again, with respect to uh, the player spot, uh, we will make it either the floor persons or someone other than the dealer's responsibility uh, to clean the high touch surfaces uh, that a player would have touched uh, before another one occupies that seat. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Zuniga, uh, did you ask, want to ask any further questions? You're good? Um, I know that um, one one thing that we will need to keep in mind, if in fact plexiglass is used, I know operationally um, that might require some lead time for you. So uh, you'll keep our team informed about that in the event that that is a direction you want to go in. Does that make sense, Pat? I see Brian I nodding. 
Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Any further uh, questions on table games? Uh, going back to then the last topic, uh, Commissioner Stebbins, did you have a question? Yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is obviously the last topic that's about screening and occupancy. Um, if in fact uh, there are some occupancy parameters that are issued, um, you know, how do the how do you plan to manage kind of the queue up or the overflow? Uh, I know we talked a little bit about the social distancing piece, but um, you know, it was, for lack of a better analogy, is this like a nightclub where there's a line, one person goes out, one person goes in? Um, if if you could give me an idea of what you might be planning if in fact you know, some occupancy guidelines are established. Oh, I see Greg's hand. Yes, please. Just thank you. All right, um, very good question. Um, so a couple of things, we're seeing this in other industries, grocery stores, how they're doing the queue. Uh, we're set up in a way here at PPC that we have uh, entry control points. Uh, obviously, if we control our, or limit our entries and our exit points um, in the use of technology at all points of our entry control points at our podiums, we're able to look at the occupancy level and we also have other um, technology um, that will help us manage the occupancy level and so allowing people in and out. Uh, but we're looking at other best practices, not only from the casino industry, but out, outside industries too, as well, to incorporate. And so we're we're looking at those considerations. So we might see something of a grocery store in and out process. Very helpful. Um, either Brian or Pat on that. Right now, no. If. Uh, you're not ready to respond, that's okay too. No, sure. There, w with ample space in our casino, our main floor is 215,000 square feet and only half uh, of the slot machines available. We have ample circulation and room for people to stay apart. We'll also be uh, making sure that we understand how many people are in the building. So I believe we should be able to manage it quite safely, uh, even when before we closed we uh, had ample space other than uh, very busy weekends. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll make sure that we're maintaining the distance and the occupancy. Thank you. I can jump in on this. Uh, Thanks, Seth. For Springfield. So there have been, like our, our colleagues, we have um, people counter technology. We have the ability to limit certain entrances and exits. In fact, we all do that uh, in a nighttime environment um, where we close off um, certain entrances and exits and create um, checkpoints uh, inside. We think that the real, um, one of the tools that will really allow us to control capacity will be focusing on the garage itself and uh, limiting um, uh, traffic in and out um, so that we can control those, the flow that comes from the garage into the building. Um, without having people come into the garage, sitting there, not able to get in the building, and, and uh, either having a negative customer experience or end up, you know, loitering in the garage itself. So we will be focused on working with our local authorities, uh, uh, signage in other ways to control um, traffic in and out of the garage, coupled with uh, access and egress control. Uh, on the facility to uh, control the flow. Excellent, thank you. Well, commissioners, uh, or um, Mr. DeMarco, were you, you weren't leaning in, were you? You all set, Greg? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, fellow commissioners, do you have another question? I have one follow-up, or uh, actually one question that we haven't addressed yet, but it's always, um, consistently on our minds in the most normal of times, and that's how we address minors. I know that you do speak to this in your plans, but I wondered if you could elaborate. Um, I know that the question about masks, whether they'll be mandated or encouraged, or is, is a subject to, that we'll turn to with more, more definitively down the road, but if we just assume for the purposes of today's discussion that uh, 
the order that is in Massachusetts remains in place by the time there is a reopening, how would you address our, you know, our desire to make sure minors are, are protected from the gaming floor and from alcohol consumption? Do I see a hand? No one wants to touch. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's <laughs> Thanks, Greg, Greg. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Yes, Greg. Yeah. Thank so, you. Uh, similar approach now. Obviously, add in uh, some of the current social distances and, and the use of masks. If that's the case, uh, we're looking at uh, plexiglass uh, at our podiums uh, for protections of our security officers. So they'll still have the ability to get an ID. Uh, the use of PPE, run the ID uh, if needed pull down the mask to visualize ID to the face. Uh, and so we're looking at our similar protocols, but some enhanced protocols with what could be masks, um, plexiglass and other tools that might be uh, afforded to us and how we can get around to ensure that we don't allow any minors onto the gaming floor. Thank you. Brian or Pat? We'll be doing the same and asking our, our patrons to remove their mask or lower their mask so we can get a positive ID and then allow them back in once they're positively ID. Thank you. And Pat or Seth? We as well. We, we as well will the same. We'll be taking the similar approach as, as Penn and Wynn. And, and while the mask presents an additional challenge, um, limiting the entrances uh, sort of balances it out. Uh, or one would hope uh, will ultimately balance it out. Thank you. So um, my fellow commissioners, do you have any other questions that you wish you had asked or you're thinking of now, despite the fact that we've gone through our categories or if there's something outside of the category that you'd like to ask that, that is connected to today's discussion? Well, uh, the only thing, it is not a question, really just a comment um, and, and an ask uh, that um, it clearly looks by what you submitted in writing and as part of this uh, discussion that you, uh, you all collectively and individually have given all of this a uh, great deal of thought and, um, and, and as such, uh, we, we ask that uh, anything that surfaces as we continue with this process, the lessons learned from other jurisdictions and um, a phased approach as it looks like it might be for for us to consider that uh, that you continue that, uh, that that dialogue. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further questions or comments now to our fellow licensees? No, I think uh, I think that this is um, has been for me the, the what we expected the start of a conversation. I've already been putting together my list for follow ups with our team. I'm sure my fellow com commissioners have been doing the same. We appreciate the fact that you've come today uh, in, in, and participated in this public dialogue. We know everything's evolving, and uh, you know we we all hope that the trends here in Massachusetts continue in the same fashion, and wish everyone well. Um, I'm going to uh, I am going to give each licensee the opportunity to do a follow up. Um, if there's anything that you wish now that, to share that you haven't had the chance to share, but again, remembering our four categories for today. And I'll just, um, we have one other item that is um, important to you um, as well. We have, a, it's 342, so I'll limit it to about a minute or two discussion. I'll start with PPC. Um, they had to answer the first question. So Lance, um, is there anything you wanna follow up with? We don't. Uh, helpful, instructive, uh, certainly, you know, at the sooner um, we're all on the same page, we can take on any additional uh, responsibilities that need to be in place. If there's something missing from our plan, I think we're looking forward to receiving some feedback and some guidance. And I can't remember who said this, but certainly some items might require lead time. And right. so the sooner we can all agree and, and have a minimum set of standards, uh, we can make sure that we are in good shape and, and well prepared in advance of whatever date it is that we reopen. And, and, and that was me who said that, but it really is informed by our team. Um, you know, we, we're lucky to have the expertise of folks who have helped open up uh, uh, after 
Sandy from New Jersey. And so they're quite aware that there are some lead um, items. And so you'll, Karen, keep very close touch in, with those. And the commission is nimble. We want to be ready to act, but we need the, these in, these are very informative so that it's an iterative, iterative process for us to learn. So we will, um, if you will uh, allow us, have these continuing discourse um, along with, of course, the input we get from, from our, um, our, our, uh, our team through the public meeting and, you know, in accordance with the open meeting law. Thank okay, you. thank you, Lance. And now back to uh, Chris or Seth or, uh, or um, Chris or Seth or Pat, thank you. Pat? Hi. I just want to, uh, just want to thank uh, the commission for the opportunity uh, for this initial discussion. Uh, I believe it was really, really helpful. Um, as I noted when I began, that uh, there's going to be a lot of learning uh, between now and when I believe the Springfield facility will actually open. Uh, so we will be, I will call it armed with real world uh, data points and experience and um, our plan will likely change as a result of that. And we are looking forward to continuing what has been a very, very collaborative relationship uh, with the state of Massachusetts uh, and its gaming commission since MGM entered uh, the state of Massachusetts. Thank you. And I see my fellow commissioners thanking as well. Okay, and Brian, to close. I would echo Lance and Pat's comments. Thank you very much for this opportunity to, to learn and to share. And I think it is a collaborative effort as an industry as we move forward in, in this uncharted territory. I think we just need to continue prudent, cautious, and uh, be very careful in what we do. And I thank you very much for the time um, and for the information. Thank you very much. And just to reiterate what I started with is that we, I think I can speak for all my fellow commissioners, we have um, really noted uh, your um, leadership in your communities and your civic uh, generosity to your fellow uh, community members. And we appreciate that very, very much. Um, it's been an extraordinary effort on the part of your industry, so thank you. Barring no further questions from my fellow commissioners, we'll move to item number two, but we invite our fellow licensees to, to continue to stay on. I mean, it's number four, I'm sorry, on our agenda. Uh, Interim Executive Director Wells. Yes, thank you, Chair. So given uh, our current status, which is that the MGC had uh, uh, authorize the closure or enforce the closure of the casinos to the 18th of May, which is this coming Monday. And given the governor's uh, public plan, uh, which has a phased reopening of businesses uh, structured for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, recommendation for the commission from the staff is that we continue the ongoing casino shutdown at least until June 1st so that the commission can incorporate the governor's forthcoming guidance and or orders regarding this phased reopening of business in the Commonwealth and incorporate that into casino reopening plans. We can also uh, consider not only the submissions of the licensees, which we've started to review now, but also federal, state, and local guidance, and also evidence of best practices from other industries and other states as others work on safely reopening casinos and other businesses. I don't think there's any expectation that the casinos would open any time before June 1st. So setting that as an at least date, and then we have the opportunity to work with the licensees and federal, state, and uh, local partners on getting best practices and getting all the information we need to work on opening these facilities safely would be probably the, the uh, most inc uh, safest incremental approach at this time. Commissioners, do you have questions for Karen? Grace? I see everyone shaking their head no. Um, uh, of course, your observations make great sense um, in this time. Uh, we again are looking for the, um, the governor's um, uh, reopening advisory board's guidance, and, and we know that there'll be some initial guidance given as early as Monday. I believe we, we've read that at least publicly. 
So I think this makes great sense. I, I believe that given the past, we would have to have a motion on this. So uh, Commissioner O'Brien, do you have a motion? Um, certainly, Madam Chair. I Thank would you. move that the commission vote to extend the existing temporary closure of the gaming establishments through at least June 1st, 2020 in light of the current situation and the governor's um, forthcoming advisory board. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron. Any further questions on any relevant to this issue? Okay, firing none, uh, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Uh, Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zunica. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you, uh, five zero, Shara, thank you very much. Do we have any further business that you'd like to put forth? I know Commissioner Cameron, um, you had a busy morning with horse racing. We have the opportunity to discuss that in the future. Um, and is there anything that's particularly urgent today that you need to raise with us? Nothing, thank you. Okay, good, thank you. Anything else that we need to address unexpectedly today? Excellent. Well, thank you everyone and, and thank you for, uh, to all the licensees for their uh, really helpful participation in today's discussion. I'll need a motion. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Commissioner. Roll call, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye, thank you everybody for their participation. Commissioner Stebbins. I uh, thank you everybody for your good work. Thank you everyone. I vote yes, five zero. See you later. Thank you. Thanks.